I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Now today is a follow-up video to one of the more popular videos we've done, which is setting up a QNAP NAS for the first time. Um, in the first video, we did it using our QTS-based operating system, and this time we're going to use QUTS Hero for anybody that's bought one of the, uh, the NAS with the small H in the part code. Uh, the NAS we're going to be basing this off today is the TVS-H1288X. Um, all the NAS that can run QUTS Hero can also run QTS, and we'll see that when we get to the first setup screen. I'll show you where to click if you do want to switch back to QTS on those as well. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is look at our QNAP QFinder Pro software. So this software is free to download on the website. I would recommend using it for setting up all the QNAP products. Um, when you open it up, it automatically does a scan and finds all available NAS. In most cases, you might just see one or two, whatever you've got. Um, I've probably got more than most here. Um, but what we're going to look for here is in the device type, we're looking for the TVS-H1288X. Uh, so we can see that one here is the second one down. And we've seen a little bit of information about it here. So we see the uh, the MAC address that I've got connected. Uh, we can see that the NAS name is the word NAS followed by the last six digits of that MAC address. And we can see that we're connected with 10 gig uh, with the 10G uh, brackets uh, after the IP address there. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is click on that one and click on login. And what this will do is it will open up a web browser at this IP address, the one that's selected here. So we'll click login and it's going to open up the setup wizard. So the first screen we're met with here is going to give us a little bit of information about what the firmware version is, um, the model of the NAS, um, and you get two choices here. You can start the smart installation of QUTS Hero, or you can switch the operating system to QTS. Um, obviously, as this is a, a tutorial on how to set up QUTS Hero, we're just going to click the blue option at the top here and not download the, uh, the separate firmware for QTS. So we'll click Start Smart Installation. It gives you the option to check for the latest firmware. Um, I will click Start on this. It won't do anything because in the uh, QFinder Pro, there was no download icon next to it telling me that there was a new firmware available. Um, so I already know it is on the latest firmware, but we'll, we'll click Start. It will just check it and skip straight past it. Uh, the first step is to set up the NAS name. Um, I generally call my NAS uh, the same as the model name of the NAS, so I'll put that in there. Type in a password. Uh, please choose one that doesn't say weak. I'm just using one that's uh, easy to remember for my test NAS. And then we'll click Next. Now, the next option is just setting up the time. Um, so long as your um, NAS is going to be connected to a network where there is um, internet access, I would normally recommend the bottom option here um, to sync with an NTP service. This is an internet time server just to make sure that um, the NAS can check periodically to make sure it's got the correct time. So we'll click Next. Um, if you are going to be doing um, uh, external remote access to your NAS, you might want to set a static IP address. I'll leave mine on Obtain automatically, um, but you can go and change this later. Um, all the settings we're picking here in this wizard can always be changed later once the NAS is, is fully set up. So we're just going to click Next on that one. And here we choose what services we're going to use. So while I'm using a Mac, I'm going to untick Macs. I don't need AFP running. Macs work just fine with SMB these days. So I generally don't run AFP. So I'll untick that. Click Next. And now it's just the summary. So we've completed the five steps. And we're going to click Apply. So as this is going off and doing its setup, um, through the magic of video editing, um, this process that takes a couple of minutes um, should be done very quickly. Okay, so we can see that's finished now. Um, so hopefully um, you can see exactly what in, what was involved there. It only takes about five minutes. So the, the next one we get is another blue button that just says go to the NAS management screen. So it's going to keep the IP address the same that we, we had from the automatic detection. But this time we're met with the login screen. So the default username, just like with QTS, is going to be admin in lowercase. And then you have to type in the password uh, that you set up in the first part of the setup process. So we'll type that in. Now, the first thing that you're going to get is quite a few little pop-ups here, just guiding you through some of the setup process, some agreements to agree to if you want to or not, um, some extra little wizards, things like that. We'll close everything, and then we'll open up the ones in the order that I would normally recommend that you do it. So we'll just close all of these options down. There we go. 
So the first thing I would normally recommend that you do is that you set up the storage itself. So, so far, all we've done is um, configure the operating system to be installed. So if we go into the storage and snapshot section, we can take a summary look of how the NAS is set up. Um, so it's showing that I've got two hard drives in bays one and two. So I've got some um, 12 terabyte Seagate Ironwolf Pros there. And in the uh, built-in M.2 slots on this NAS, I've got some Seagate Ironwolf 510s, um, the 480 gig variants in the, the two main slots there. So if we go down, we can look at the disk setup. Um, so as you click on each disk, it's going to show you where they're located. So the M.2s are located uh, under the chassis in the side. And then on the front here with disks one and two, we've got them in the main two bays there. So you can see all the information about the drives there as well. Um, so the first screen that you'll go to here is on the left hand side in the storage and snapshots application is the storage slash snapshots section. So in here, you get an option at the top right there to create a new storage pool. Now this is the uh, first difference uh, from say uh, setting up a QTS based NAS. The recommendation for QUTS Hero ideally would be that you would use SSD storage uh, for your first storage pool. That's your, that's going to be allocated as your system drive, um, and it's it, everything works so much better faster if you're going to have SSDs as your system drive. So that's what I'll do. So the first one is an introduction about what a storage pool is. So it's effectively where the RAID is done. The, the disks are grouped together uh, to form the RAID. So we're going to click Next. Now I've got four disks to choose from, but I'm only going to select the two disks here that are listed as M.2 SSD. So I've got the two NVMEs here. So I'm going to select those two. So we can see over here on the bus type, they're NVME. And I'm going to leave it as the default recommendation of RAID 1. It will let you choose RAID 0 if you want, but for the system drive, I would definitely recommend using RAID 1, which is a mirrored RAID, uh, for a bit of redundancy there. So I'll leave that, click Next. And here you've got all the different options for whether you want to use snapshots, whether you want uh, over-provisioning. Uh, we might cover over-provisioning in a different video, but I'll leave it on the default recommendation. And you can set alert thresholds on the volume. I normally disable this on the storage pools, um, especially if you're using thick provision volumes. Um, I'm going to use thin provisioning ones, so I'm going to leave that one ticked for this time. So click Next. You get a bit of a summary, just all the different options that you just selected. And then I'm going to click Create. Are you sure? Everything will be erased on those disks. Yes, I'm sure. So this will take a few minutes. So it's going to go through. It's going to create the system drive. We can see it's already put storage pool one brackets system there. Um, so as it's creating this, it's creating the first storage pool, adding all the system information. So some of the built-in services on the NAS are going to be copied into this uh, storage pool from the built-in flash storage uh, where the firmware lives in the product uh, when we ship it. Um, and then it's also going to create a few default shares that are needed for these system services. So these default shares, they can't be erased after the fact, uh, but you can go and hide them if you don't want them to be displayed anywhere. Once the setup's complete, uh, you can hide them so that they don't come up in um, network searches or, 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 or browsing the NAS. So you can make them uh, effectively disappear, but you can never delete them because the system uh, does need those, those separate folders. Uh, so again, through the magic of video editing, we'll just let this one um, create and set up the default shares. Uh, once we've got that one created, uh, we'll create some storage on the extra drives that I've got in there as well. Okay, so now we can see that the status of the new storage pool says it's ready. We've got some default uh, shares that are already created. Again, if you do want to hide these, you can go into the control panel, uh, go across to the shared folders. So if you don't want to see them when you're browsing network shares, you can edit the properties of these shares, say the public one, and the top option there is hide network drive. So if you were to tick that box and click OK, you'll see that the column over here will change to hidden yes. So that public share will still be there. You will still see it in the main view here, but when somebody is browsing the network shares across the network um, on a Mac, that would be with Finder. On Windows, that would be with Windows Explorer. Um, that share will not be visible. It's basically not shared using the network protocol, so it won't be visible to them. Um, so some extra options that we're going to do now is we're going to create another storage pool. This time we're going to create one on the hard drive. So here we've only got 398 gigabytes of available storage, um, which isn't very much. So if you wanted to go to create a new storage pool, you click the create option and then you've got an option here for new storage pool. The same message about what a storage pool is. 
but this time there's only two disks to choose from because we used the other two. So I'm going to tick the box at the top, which will select all disks. Um, again, because it's just two disks, I've got the choices of RAID 0 and RAID 1. You can see all the different options that we do have. If you have enough disks, you can choose more. So you need three or more to do RAID 5, um, an even number of disks, uh, 4, 6, 8, 10, so on for RAID 10. And then you've got quite a few other options to choose from as well. But I'm just going to leave it on the RAID 1 default there. I'm going to click Next. All the same options for over provisioning, alert thresholds, things like that. We'll click next. Just verify that your settings are correct and click create. Uh, another warning, just that anything on those disks will be erased by this process. That's fine. Um, so this one will happen a lot quicker than the original one because there's no system data going on this one. So it's not creating default shares or anything like that. Um, so if I was to expand this out, there's nothing in it. So although I've created a storage pool, there is nothing in it. Uh, we cannot use it yet. Uh, so if I want to create some usable space in there, I have to create a shared folder within that storage pool. So at the top, we'll go to create again. But this time, we're going to choose new shared folder. So one thing to take note is storage pool one is the system volume with the SSDs. Storage pool two is effectively the data archive uh, mass storage volume uh, that's going to have um, uh, much more capacity. So with those bigger hard drives, um, I've got quite a bit more capacity here. So we'll go create new shared folder, click start on the wizard. And now you just have to create what you want it to be called. So I'll call this the data share. Now, the important box to select here is this storage pool box. Um, so the first one is the SSD, storage pool one. Uh, we can generally tell that because it's much smaller than the other. It's only 273 gigabytes available after the default shares were created. Um, and down here on storage pool two, we can see that we've got um, a much larger capacity space there. Um, so the reason it's only 7.25, even though it's showing 10.52, is that we have reserved some of the space for things like um, snapshots, um, for over-provisioning, things like that. That's all in there. That's why the capacity is a bit lower. You can turn those off if you want more space available. So we'll choose storage pool 2, and now we get to pick the size of this volume. So let's say we'll start with a, a 5 terabyte volume in there. Um, you can enable encryption if you wish. And this is where you can turn on compression, data deduplication, some SSD caching if you have it enabled. Um, we're going to click Next. This is where you set the privileges for this share. So currently I've only got the admin user because it's a default setup. I'm going to give the admin user read and write permissions. Click Next. And I can choose whether I want to hide the network drive or enable any of the other features that we've got. Click Next. Just a bit of a summary. Make sure everything's how I want it to be. And click Finish. A little warning just there that you can also configure the shares as um, content folders for multimedia, things like that. We'll click OK. So it's going to go off and it's going to create that five terabyte share. Um, we can already see it appeared in the background there. Um, so as soon as it's finished creating that, we'll be able to use it. So there we go. We've got a ready um, tick box next to it. So we've got our data share. If you ever did want to use data deduplication, it is simply a case of ticking the boxes that's there. So by default, the NAS only enables uh, uh, compression. If you want to enable deduplication on it, you can just simply go ahead and tick a box. So for say the public share, I can just tick that box, applied successfully. That's now enabled. It's that quick to do it. Um, so that's the majority of the, the setup that we wanted to cover off there on the NAS. Um, all the drives now have changed from being free, so they were the purple symbol before, so they're now all blue, so they're all being used for data. Um, so all the drives that I've currently got added um, are completely set up, so now you're free to go and install any other apps that you want or any other functions, services. Um, a lot of the services on the NAS are in the control panel. Um, so if you wanted to enable something, so you did want to have AFP enabled for a Mac, there's an option down here in Network and File Services. Under Apple Networking, you can enable AFP if you do decide that you want that later. And in the Network and Virtual Switch, um, in the initial setup, we set it up without having any um, extra functions in there. We, we set it up without setting a static IP address, things like that. Um, so what we can do... Let's have a look, is we can have a look at the interfaces. We can go down to the interface that we've got connected. So there's our 10 gig adapter. We can click the three dots, we can click configure, and we can change it to use a static IP address if we wish. Um, so all the settings done in the wizard, um, you can always go back and change it if you think you set it up wrong or you want to change uh, how you initially chose to set it up. You can go ahead and change it at a later date if you want to as well. 
Okay, hopefully you found that useful. Um, if you do have um, any other questions, please drop them in the comments below. We're pretty quick at replying to those. Um, so yeah, thanks thanks a lot for, for watching this far. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, and we'll see you in the next one.